Okay, we're going to try something new out today. Hello, everyone. It's Monday, and it's the day after WrestleMania. Will's here with me, and uh, we're filming a new way, and this is officially the first video on the iPhone 5. Yeah! Ooh. That's right. I really wish ah. I had an applause track right now. That works. Fireworks. Boo. Drum beats. Bum, 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 yeah. bum, 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 bum. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, when I hear the drums. Ooh. Not ghost, Ric Flair. That's what I was doing. Okay, I thought you were like, ooh, ooh. ghost. Ooh, scary ghost. You can't see my hands. I'll move closer. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Yeah, we're not going there. Yeah, last night was WrestleMania, and, um, you know, honestly, it was a tad bit underwhelming. Not necessarily bad, per se, but... Underwhelming, nonetheless. Well, what I, do you think? I enjoyed the show yeah. as I as I do every year. But I had a good time at my house. It was fun. I'm Indeed. glad I get to do this get together once every year. I hope everybody Absolutely. comes back next year for WrestleMania sure 30, will. and I'll try to do something. I don't know if I'll do something different, but more, maybe more something uh, grandiose okay. this time around. Maybe you know, get like a big old poster and put the logo on it, and you know, and have that you know in the. Uh, in the living room, but I enjoyed the show, and you know, I know people are probably going to give me a lot of crap for what I'm about to say. I'm but sure they will. We've been reading I, on Twitter and Facebook. All I day. ranked the show at about a seven and a half to an eight point five. That's where it ranks in my book. And the Undertaker and CM Punk match definitely match not of the only night. saved the show, but it was the match, match of, the of the night. night. And for all of you people that you know aren't big on Taker, his last, you know. What seven yeah, now? Seven. seven bouts have you know been you know? I guess nearly the same guy. Yeah, have been the match of the pay per view. Literally, and Sir Owen agrees with that. And yeah, yeah CM Punk. I don't have to be a Taker fan to agree with all. This. All I have to say is, rest in peace. Well, well, I don't know about you, but um, it's time to talk WrestleMania. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Um, last night, ladies and gentlemen, there was a lot of really. Uh, well, the word I'm looking for here would be uh, predictability. Oh, and I would also like to point out one more thing. Got uh, it. Taker's entrance last night was very creative. Yes, very, very much so. With the, with the, with the uh, hands clawing at him like... They're coming out at like you. Like undead souls. But seriously, that was, hands come out at him. Go ahead. Yeah, that, do it. Like, Do it. Yeah. Lot, yes! Like that, that was very creative. We want your soul. That and was your very creative cards. and very, very unique, and yes. I enjoyed it, and that's why, in my opinion, Taker's entrance is still the best in the business. Absolutely. And, um... Having witnessed it live, actually, I mean, it was a long time ago. We'll go back to SummerSlam 1995 in Pittsburgh, actually. That was when Kama, the supreme fighting machine that you guys would know as the good father or the godfather, basically, he decided he wanted to take the Undertaker's urn and, and, melt, it melt, it and melt it down, I remember, into, into a, a necklace, necklace. Yep. a gaudy Mr. T-style necklace. Yep, I remember. And after this match was over, of course... Undertaker reigned supreme, now, and he got the necklace. Now, for some reason, we're not supposed to remember that. Well, we're not supposed to remember that fact at all. And the fact that the urn is fine, and Paul Bear didn't get drowned in oatmeal three times, so, I mean, that never happened. But it did happen. Of course it did. Um, now, when you were there, we're did, to the, that. did the arena get, uh, did you feel a chill? It was like being in, in uh, Letterman's audience. Really? Uh, because if you didn't know, David Letterman... Make sure that his crowd is awake at all times by keeping it as absolutely humanly cold as possible. So it felt like an icebox. Yeah, it was freezing. And given the fact that we were in Pittsburgh, in the Pittsburgh Penguins arena, it was really interesting. Yeah, that sure it was that cold. I have that match on DVD and I remember the crowd. Not the greatest match, but it's, I, I still I saw The Undertaker I remember, live. I remember the crowd popped really, mm -hmm. really big. And you, know, you can always hear the commentators talking about how you can feel the chill when he yeah, really walks out. So. I mean, it was it was actually it was cool. an it was an okay SummerSlam. I mean, uh, we saw uh, the debut of Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He took on Bob Sparkplug Holly. We saw One Two Three Kid against Hakushi. There was the second, which I think is better personally, Razor Ramon Shawn Michaels ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. And let's not forget, I don't, I can't remember if this was SummerSlam or not. Mm -hmm. It might be when you know Chuck Norris was the special guest enforcer. Survivor for Series. That Survivor Series '94 with. Undertaker and Yokozuna in the casket match, yep. and Chuck Norris kicked Jeff Jarrett square onto his head. Yeah. I haven't forgotten about that. It's still one of the of coolest not. moments in wrestling. Even though Chuck Norris has no powers now because he's beardless. He still has powers. He'll just regrow the beard. It's, it's like the late, great Mike Awesome. His mullet gave him powers, just like Chuck Norris's beard gave him powers. Chuck, now now his uh, infomercials won't sell that still much. Still, though, would you want to be kicked in the face by Chuck Norris, beard or no beard? 
I don't think so, Barry. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah, I love sidekicks. He's still he's still seventy two years old and can still kick your you know. Butt, yes, so, you know, exactly. I wouldn't mess with Gluteus him. Maximus. That's right. Back here. Wouldn't mess with him. No, not at all. But basically what I was trying to say, when it comes down to it, The Undertaker's entrance is awesome live. And I can totally imagine now how it is, because it's totally different than it was. I mean, obviously I missed The Undertaker live entrance when he rode out on the uh, motorcycle, and he was Biker Mark, and he came out to uh, Bob Ritchie music, which I absolutely hate. But uh, Or even uh, Limp Biscuit, which also I really don't like either. But uh, Fred Durst, to each his own. he's a great director. He really is, guys. Keep that in mind. So, um... He's actually a better director than he is a musician. And that's no lie about that! Now, here's the thing. WrestleMania last night, like I said, it wasn't bad. I'm not going to say it was bad at all. Will's not saying it's bad. I'm not nope. saying it's bad. And the IWC overall are not going to say that it's bad. But it was kind of underwhelming. Really underwhelming. I, I kind of agree and I kind yeah. of disagree. I thought that the matches were not how I would have no, placed them. For not example, I would not have started with the... Shield versus Sheamus, no. Orton, and Big Show. I would have gone with Jericho and Fandango to start the start the show off if it were me. Absolutely. That's and, what um, I would have done. And there was also talk that it was going to be Hell No against Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston that was supposed to start the show too, but they obviously changed their mind because we got two completely different matches and we ended up getting the Shield against Sheamus, Orton, and Show to start the show. Yes, we did. Which uh, did not get the Randy Orton heel turn that everyone if, was expecting. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is if, is if I booked it, I would put Jericho and Fandango first and then have the the two tag team matches, the Shield versus Sheamus mm -hmm. show yes. and Orton after that, then have the World Tag Team Championship match That's right. Absolutely. directly behind it. Absolutely. And then uh, I would have Ryback and Mark Henry. And then right I would, person went over. And no matter then, what anybody thinks. Um, I know Sir Owen says that Punk and Taker should have been the main event, which I agree with. Yeah. It should have been. Absolutely. But if if I wasn't going to put that at the main event, that would have been directly after Ryback and Mark Henry. You can't really burn out your crowd. You actually have to pace your show the right way. You have to start them out hot. You have to let them cool down a bit. You have to bring them back up again, cool them down again. And by the end of the show, they're still ready to cheer for the main event, which, as we learned last night, at least in the acoustics that we heard on pay-per-view, that just wasn't there. So that's how I would I would have had... I would have had Punk and... I would have had uh, Punk and Taker on yep. after Ryback Absolutely. and uh, Mark Henry and then done... Brock and Triple H, and then had the WWE Championship match, and of course uh, I forgot about the World Heavyweight Championship match. That would have probably, most people did. That probably would have been, um, I would say, after uh, Punk and Taker, if that were the case. Actually, guys, or, I'm going to let you let you talk a little bit actually about or, whatever you'd like to chat about because if not, uh, we're going to burn the house down with the pizza. So mom, don't watch this. Uh, we're not going to burn the house down. Don't worry. I'm going to take care of it. But uh, you go take care of that, and I will be right back, guys. Trust me. I'll join you in just a second. Okay. Well, I'll try to make this uh, interesting or entertaining if I can. But, yeah. Uh, no, I I really enjoyed WrestleMania a lot. I, I enjoy it every year, and I get a group of friends together every year to, you know, come over to my house, and we watch the show. And, and you know, it's always it's always great to share my passion of professional wrestling with my friends. And, you know, certainly Sir Owen's been watching wrestling a lot longer than I have, but, you know, I'm not some just, you know, fanboy that doesn't know what he's talking about. I know what, I know how the business works. I know how things work. I know how matches work and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not, I'm not unintelligent in that regard. I, I certainly don't know as much as Sir Owen does, but there, there's always someone that knows more than you out there somewhere. So to say that I know more about wrestling than anybody else would be a very dramatic understatement. But I would have to say that the loudest pop of the night was when Taker pin punk um, to go 21-0. That got a great reaction out of everybody in my house, me especially, because I, that's the match that I was really emotionally invested in, and I was screaming at my television. You can ask anybody that was there. You can ask Sir Owen. I was screaming, and I was having... It looked like I was going to, you know, have a, have a spaz attack or go spastic, and I'm surprised that no one's recorded it by now, but I guess next year uh, we'll have to uh, get that on film to show you guys just how into it I get. And, 
Um, the WWE Championship match, I know I'm kind of jumping ahead. I'm giving my thoughts on, on that. You know, I really enjoyed the first match between Rock and Cena, and I know some people say it wasn't as good. Some people say it was. I really enjoyed this one, too. And I thought that um, I just thought that the crowd wasn't as into it as they could have been, even though it was kind of predictable that yes, Cena was going to win the title this time around. I still really enjoyed uh, the match that they had together. You know, they used they used a, a few too many holes, and there were two, you know, one too many, you know, rock bottoms and attitude adjustments, and you know, it would have been, I think, a better overall match if we had left out some of those things. But you know. I actually really did enjoy both of their matches from WrestleMania 28 and this year. I really, I, I really did. I thought they were they were good, and I, and you know, it's just a matter of you know Cena and Rock kind of you know meshing together. And I thought honestly they meshed better this time than they did the previous the previous year. And that's just you know my opinion, and. So I, I enjoyed the WWE Championship match. Um, as for um, Brock Lesnar versus Triple H, again, that's another one that I enjoyed. That one was very, very physical, and I expected it to be physical. I knew it would be physical. You know, I wouldn't have minded if Lesnar had gotten busted open, but he didn't, so... And I can understand, but again, it's just my opinion. I I enjoyed that match. I thought... I thought it was good, although Triple H with short hair was kind of weird. That looks was a like little. Bobby Roode. That was that was a little different. I, I kind looks of. Like Bobby Roode. I, I was a little kind of you know uh, shaking my head at that. Oh, and Sir Owen's back, so yes. I'll, I'll let him have his yes. have his chair back, and I'm going to answer a text message that a friend of mine just sent me. That's guys, a little alarming. Guys, I'll say something right now, boys and girls. Hope you enjoy Will, because. The secret's out very, very soon, and I mean soon as in the next month or so. Will's actually getting a brand new segment on this YouTube channel, and actually, um, for those of you, and I'm just going to completely say it right here, right off the top, I'm trying my best to turn this into a mini version of that guy with the glasses. Obviously, we're talking about wrestling, we talk about Disney, we talk about movies, and um, eventually we'll find someone to talk about music. Ben Sams, I'm looking at you, sir. Now... I know we already do the AJ's Weekend Movie Reviews, but, you know, I've got some, something else in mind. So, uh, I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to Will, who is going to be our Mr. Flashback. Yes, he's going to remember the movies that you guys want to forget. And, uh, actually, I'm going to, uh, let the cat out of the bag right away. The first editions of Mr. Flashback is going to be involving the films of the great Terrence Jean Balea. That's right. Oh, I did not come up with this idea. Not. He did not at all. But this is what you guys want, folks. Or should I say, this is what you want, brother. So that's exactly <laughs> what you going to do. That's right. What you going to do when Mr. Flashback runs wild on you, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're talking No Holds Barred, we're talking Mr. Nanny, we're talking Suburban Commando. Yes, we are going to do, we're going to do what Doug Walker won't. We're actually going to do the Hulk no, Hogan movies. Hey, I'm sure he would do it. He has a lot of other things he really needs well, to worry that's, about. That's true, but I'm sure that he would, I mean, he did Batman and Robin, but Which, let's not talk mm -hmm. about that because we all know what that, how I feel about that film and you know. Three letters, BCC, that's all I'm going to say right there. No, okay, no. Credit card. Yes, exactly. A now. bad credit card. Yes, yes. The outburst was coming. I knew it was going to. Yeah, that's what we set up for segues. Now, ladies and gentlemen, like, what he was talking about, actually, I was saying, mentioning the fact that Triple H uh, looked kind of strange. Um, yeah, just a bit. I don't like... Although, I think I don't the like short it. hair works for him. I don't like it with the short hair, honestly. It kind of gives him a more distinguished look, I think. He doesn't have the ponytail anymore, and he doesn't have the uh, long hair that you can throw him over the top well, of anymore. Well, neither No, no, he doesn't. He, uh, he looks like uh, the lost member of the Red Warriors. You have the mohawk then going down. Well, I, I, think, like I think Taker had significantly more hair than he did. Uh, yeah, so many most definitely. Me. So it looks like to me like he's trying to grow it back. I don't want him to look like Uncle Fester or anything like that. Right, I think he's trying to grow it back a little bit. Yeah. But um, I don't know what Will talked about, so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed Will because you're going to get to see a lot of him very soon. I can't get AJ on these and shows. And if you so. guys don't enjoy me, then I'm sorry, but 
Oops. He, he doesn't look like a chef either. No, I don't. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin says that he doesn't look like a chef, so he doesn't look like a chef, guys. And that's, and that's the bottom line. Why? Because Stone Cold said so. Okay, I, I, I'll tell you right now, honestly, uh, full disclosure, I'm digging this right now, so I think this is going to be how we shoot the videos from now on. As long as this isn't backwards or you're not seeing a sideways view or anything, then uh, we'll be looks fine. Pretty, looks pretty good to me. I think it looks fine, so that's what we're going to go with. Yeah. And uh, who knows, maybe this is going to be how we shoot videos from now on and we uh, could retire the iPod Touch. So, and, and, you're, uh, so you were saying that you didn't think that... Uh, WrestleMania was bad, so no. I gave it a 7.5 to an 8.5. What what do you give it, Sir Owen? Uh, uh, 7, 7.5. I wouldn't go 8. Um, if you want to talk um, being feeling like a WrestleMania, it, it didn't. It really didn't feel like it. It felt like a four-hour Raw, with The Undertaker and CM Punk thrown in there as well. Match of the night, by the way. In absolutely. Case in case we hadn't... Early uh, match of the year that. candidate yes. as well. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And any Undertaker match at WrestleMania usually is an early match of the year candidate. Given Especially the, back the last in April. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. Once again, it's something you'll never see, or you might see it, I don't know. It's like, here's the thing is what I say, and then I said it over and over again, and it turns out to be a big drinking game. So, basically, what I'm going to try to say about this is, WrestleMania, like I said, it was underwhelming. Um, when it comes down to it, you had Fondango and Chris Jericho. No, 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 you got to pronounce his name right. It's not Fondango. It's Fondango, Fondango. yeah. It's Fondango. Cheap movie tickets was not chanted. I'm very disappointed. I chanted in New York it. Crowd. I'm very I disappointed in you, New Jersey crowd. I, I, hey. One I man chant is still I a great chant. I chanted it. Absolutely. I was like, cheap movie tickets. And you know cheap what? I think tickets. a few people in my house did the same thing. Yes, they did. The ones that were paying attention, they kind of did start chanting along with you. And you know what? On April 29th, when we go to Raw in Columbus, we're going to try to get that chant started. Yeah. And I like fandom, though. I do. I'm sorry. Worst gimmick in, in the history of Monday Night Raw. Did, it, did, did you see Duke the Dumpster Grossy or T.L. Hopper or the Goon? I mean, I'm just talking like early 90s WWF here. So, I mean, I could go on for a, long, a battle cat. I could go on for a long time about this if I really wanted to. Bad gimmicks. I'll, I'll let you talk while I look at some messages that I just got. Okay. Out. Now, I said this match could steal the show. Yes, this match could have stealed the show. It didn't. Crowd wasn't into it. And, uh, you know, honestly, the whole night, the crowd really wasn't into much, really. Um, you can blame the acoustics, but I'm going to say what Will said last night when it comes down to it. If you blame the acoustics, then why could you hear it during Undertaker and Punk and you couldn't hear it any other time? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying it at all. I'm not going to doubt that everyone in attendance obviously had a better time than we did. Even the fact that some of them got rained on. Sorry, Jeff and Harmony and Scarlett. For uh, you guys getting rained on and everyone else in the building, Actually, all you know, 80,000 people. I think we had just as just a good a time as all 80,000 people did. Very true. Absolutely. I, really, I wish fact, I would have got some food, but I didn't want to leave my spot. Matter of fact, I think maybe we had had a better time yeah. than the 80,000 people. Because we didn't have to fight parking or traffic or two-hour lines for the merch stand when everything was completely sold out. That's what Scarlett told me. She literally went to a WWE shop and bought everything she was going to buy after the fact on the way back. So, that's how it happens, guys. It's, it's WrestleMania. Obviously, everything's going to be sold out. But it's okay. No big deal. Now, the match underperformed. Jericho had his working boots on. It just it just didn't work. It didn't gel. It wasn't a bad match. It just, it just was kind of there. It seemed like something you'd see on Raw or something you'd see on SmackDown. Certainly not to the palette pageantry of the greatest show of the year and the biggest show of the year. I like The Shield. A lot, obviously. I'm a big fan of Dean Ambrose. I don't believe in the shield. Dean Ambrose is awesome. I don't know why I called him Ambrose. I, anyway, I can't edit it. It's, it's, it's Ambrose. Yeah, Get it right. John Moxley, independent journeyman, was working for CZW. I believe CZW were heavyweight champion. I, I'm sure Ashley and the old, everyone from the whole indie show are going to correct me on this if I'm wrong. But I remember him, a lot of great promos in CZW. Look at Seth Rollins, a.k.a. Tyler Black, former Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. And obviously we know CM Punk's pedigree. And even the fact Antonio Cesaro wasn't on the pay-per-view, he still works for the company right now. These are superstars that just a few years ago were just toiling away on the independents. They were getting that paycheck, working for PWG and Ring of Honor, and indies all across the country, and even across the world. And now where they are? 
they're at WrestleMania. They're in the WWE. They're at the big time now. And that is a quite a feather in the cap to someone like Tyler Black and like John Moxley, like Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, to be able to go from working at flea markets and different shows across the country for like $500 a payday, that going running rate sometimes, or maybe not even a payday, given that when they were just breaking in, probably didn't really work for anything. They just wanted the ring time, because that's how a lot of rookies get their ring time. They work for free. But when it comes down to it, it's great to see what they have become. The fact that they're working for WWE now. The fact that people know who they are now. Not just the internet. Look at Daniel Bryan. Bryan Danielson is literally the internet darling. Former Ring of Honor World Champion. Goat face. Former PWG Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Bryan Danielson's done a lot. And it took a lot to get him into WWE in the first place. And now he's here. He's not going anywhere, folks. Daniel Bryan's here to stay. And Daniel Bryan is awesome. And uh, I, like I said before, I've said it. I said it last night on the video. You may or not, may or may not see. I've said it on Raw recaps, SmackDown recaps. When it comes down to it, well, I'm going to stick with this fact. Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler together have the potential to be the Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels of this generation. I agree. Absolutely. Sorry, I'm. It's okay. The crisis situation. No harm done. Um, Ryback needed to win last night. He didn't. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. I'm glad Mark Henry won, because Mark Henry needed to win as well. They both kind of needed to win, so they kind of painted themselves into a corner. But when it all boils down to it, he got his shine back at the very end of the match, so that's all that matters. So it really didn't do anything to hurt Ryback losing to Mark Henry, given the fact that basically he was going for shell shock, and Henry grabbed the ropes, and he fell on Ryback. So it was a fluke that Henry won, because Ryback had him beat. So, there's no loss of credibility to Mark Henry in that loss. Not at all. No. Not and at all. another thing I want to talk about as well. Um, I'm a big Miz fan, as you well know. And I'm a big Wade Barrett fan. And you know, they really gave it all for about five minutes. For the one-hour pre-show, which apparently is now WWE Sports Center, Or it looks like something you'd see on the UFC on Fox. Or, obviously I'm not a sports guy, so I'm just going with what everyone else is saying. But when it comes down to it, you basically had... I believe it was Dusty Rhodes, Jim Ross, Kofi Kingston, and uh, who was the fine? Who was the fourth person that was there? Do you recall? Um, there's one more. Some guy. Some guy. I don't know. I know we had Matt Stryker at ringside. Matt Stryker and Josh Matthews at ringside. So uh, that might have been no Scott Stanford. Yeah, that's it. Scott Stanford's the other guy. Yeah. So uh, who? Scott Stanford. Who in the blue hell? Is Scott Stanford. Scott Stanford. From Z True Long Island Story. Oh, God. Yes. So Zack Ryder, of course, he had his battle with catering last night. So hopefully he won over those lobster tails. Now, because it's WrestleMania, so obviously you got to go all out. Now, next year is going to be WrestleMania 30. Nolans, baby, Louisiana. It's all about beignets and Mardi Gras. And it's going to be glorious. And I want to talk about the matches you're going to see at WrestleMania 30, potentially. Obviously, they're not going to be the matches, guaranteed. But I want to talk about that in a minute. But real quick, before I get done with that, I do want to mention the fact that Cesaro should have been on the pay-per-view last night. I understand why he wasn't. Time constraints didn't allow for the mixed tag match to go on the pay-per-view. I see it on Raw in about a half an hour. And um, another thing, Rock and Cena was fine. Honestly, I didn't really overall had a pro have a problem with Actually, it. Actually, that's what I talked about when you were out of the room. I mentioned didn't have a problem liked, with Rock and Cena at all. I like that one and how I like yeah. Rock and Triple H. Rock and Triple H was good. I mean, the crowd, okay, the sound of the crowd was bad. Obviously, in real life, you if you were there personally, you were able to hear a lot differently than we did. Even if you were up in the cheap seats or down at ringside or if you are even in one of the um, club level or one of the suites, you obviously had a better appearance on WrestleMania than we did. But, uh, when it came down to it, it just really didn't seem like the crowd was really into it as much. Rock and Cena, on the other hand, you had every single 80,000 people plus cheering for The Rock and booing John Cena to the point that, like I said, I talked about Rob Van Dam and John Cena at One Night Stand at the Manhattan Center in New York. New York again. Don't forget this. New York versus John Cena. It just doesn't gel. And I also and uh, that was a huge reaction against Cena, and this was even worse. And I also mentioned how... I liked their match from WrestleMania 28 as well. Absolutely, that they had, and I absolutely, and I brought up the fact that they gelled well, a lot better than we together. thought they would. 
and I thought they gelled better this time than they did last year. Perfect, perfect. I totally agree. And um, the match was good. I mean, overall, it's not it's not great, but it's good. It was a serviceable match. It was enjoyable. The crowd may not have been into it, but we were. And I'm sure you guys were as well. Or if you weren't, then obviously you weren't. But I mean, when it, when it all boils down to is this. They delivered. John Cena and The Rock, they were the marquee match at WrestleMania. You can say what you want about Punk and The Undertaker. It should have been the main event. Yes, it should have. But I totally understand from a business perspective why it was not. Triple H and Brock Lesnar, could that have been the main event? No. It's a match to build you back up after you get dropped down earlier on in the card. By the way, Paul Heyman went 0 for 2 last night. Yeah. And like I said, the wrong person took out Heyman. No offense to Shawn Michaels, and he got the probably one of the bigger reactions of the night, even yes, more so than most of the talent. deservedly so. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second, actually, WrestleMania 30, and uh, potentially seeing the Heartbreak Kid again. But again, deservedly so. Absolutely, absolutely. Reactions. And uh, the wrong person took him out. Obviously, Heyman dressed up like Paul, he Paul Bear, and he put on the paint. Basically, what Sir Owen is trying to he say is He should have been the one that took the beating. Is that... Undertaker should have tombstone. Yes, Paul at, Heyman. At least a choke slam. I mean, yes, he at least punch him off the ring. He was going to choke slam him until Punk caused a uh, distraction, which yes. I was. But either way, mm -hmm. Happy Heyman got his, and I was, and it was glorious, and I was very happy that Heyman uh, got you know dropped yes. on his back because he had to. Obviously, Undertaker had to get he had to get over on Paul Heyman and CM Punk last exactly. night. Exactly. Even the fact, obviously, he's the Undertaker. He's locker room leader. He's been with the company forever, longer than anyone on the uh, the active Most roster. respected superstar Absolutely. in the company and the Absolutely. best pure striker. Yes. As we saw a lot last night. A lot of the suit bones, trademark yeah. Jim Ross. But the match was awesome. And By the way, that's another thing. Michael Cole. <laughs> Michael Cole. Learn the word funk. Asaurus has an N. First of all, I don't know who does your wardrobe. Oh, boy. But that tie you wore last night, I don't know why you picked a purple tie. I mean, I was at home before I came to watch Raw with, yeah. with Sir Owen. Absolutely. And I was watching the end of an era match between Triple H and The Undertaker from last year, and you had that nasty pink vest on with, with the pink tie. <laughs> the purple tie Real was... Real wear pink unless you're Michael Cole. The, the purple tie <laughs> was a slight improvement, but you have got to get someone to actually pay attention to your wardrobe. And here's another thing. Zeb Coulter had a better tie than him last night. Yeah. Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez had a better tie a better tie than you. My God, man. Mexican born, Mexican bred. And here's another Mexican thing. Dead. Michael Cole, I know you think you're the world's greatest commentator. He's terrible. terrible. But you're not. No. And I really don't care if that upsets anybody or gets anybody PO'd. Because I'm a commentator, I know how it works. Good old JR should have called that match last night. If he wasn't going to call any other match, yes, absolutely. he should have called Undertaker versus CM Punk. I think he should just call the matches of The Undertaker at WrestleMania period. Yes, and I completely agree with that because no one tells a story the way that Jim Ross does with emotion and passion, and he makes he makes you get invested in the match. All you do is shout vintage every time a guy hits a maneuver. Basically, what you have here is Jim Ross is our generation's Gordon Soley. Yes. And Gordon Soley is the greatest of all time. No one can doubt this. He is the greatest commentator of all time. JR is behind. Jim Ross, Ross is second. Yes, he is. Absolutely. And Jim Ross is old school. He definitely knows about Gordon Soley. I believe, if I remember correctly, they've actually worked in the same broadcast booth once or twice. Wow. I believe that was done when uh, Jim Ross was doing NWA commentary on uh, Saturday night, 6.05 at... Uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. But we've, we've gotten way off topic here. JR should have called the Absolutely. match. Absolutely. And uh, if Steve Austin comes back, wink, wink, we're, uh, yeah, he yeah, should that, call that match too. That, he should call that match Absolutely. and call Taker versus Lesnar if we see that at WrestleMania 30, which as Sir Owen alluded to, we'll get to in just a minute. But we'll talk Michael about Cole, here. as a commentator, I can't stand you. He legitimately doesn't like Michael Cole. I can't stand you. He has more respect for you Michael were, Cole. You were, better, you were better doing backstage segments and calling matches on SmackDown. That I could deal with because at least you had Taz and JBL. Taz to, is awesome. To pull your... So is JBL. Pardon my French, but to pull your ass out of the fire when you made a mistake. As referenced, you know, uh, one of my favorite JBL moments is when... It was uh, Mr. Kennedy and Undertaker at... Uh, more TNA references, guys. At No Mercy... Uh, back in 2006, yeah. where they had their 
uh, short feud against each other, and Michael Cole referred to Taker as Taker. I knew Taker. he was going here. And JBL said, that's the Undertaker. You know him well enough to call him Taker? What the hell's wrong with you? And exactly. then J And then Michael Cole apologized, and I said, you're darn right you apologized. You don't call him Taker. That's the Undertaker to you, Michael Cole. Kind of like what John Heidenreich did to him. So That was kind of funny. So, Michael Cole, please, I know you've got Vince chirping in your ear, but oh, yeah. King on Raw sounds better than you on commentary every week. Yeah. And I love the King. Yeah, but his commentary is not as great either. To be totally well, that's honest. because of the PG yeah. rating and because of where they are. But you know what? There's reasons for that. I've guys. even seen King the last couple of weeks be edgier with his commentary than you have. It's just when he says something that kind of gets overshadowed by something else that someone else is saying and he kind of gets thrown in the back and then thrown in the wayside and completely forgotten and it's completely forgotten immediately to the point that basically the point he was trying to make is just completely immediately forgotten and I just basically said that in a roundabout way to get to this the fact that um, he's great at segues, he's great at one-liners he's awesome when it comes to uh, putting over a storyline because obviously he is a veteran so he's been in the ring he knows what he's doing and uh, all the fact he lost it the Cole Mania, that was a travesty, yes. to say the least. Um, he should have been pile-driven and did a stretcher job. But, of course, that wasn't going to happen, because, obviously, for some reason, Jerry Lawler does not do the pile-driver in the WWE anymore. So, Well, that's because... But it's Lawler's finish, and that, always that's, was. That's true, but that's also because... He has the fist drop now. That's also because the no, one allowed is, no one is allowed to use the pile-driver except for the Undertaker, because the Undertaker protects, the, game can't do it protects the, the uh, opponent's head. Unless, yeah. unless it's... Unless it's being done to Pete Rose or uh, Linda McMahon, then you completely miss the canvas. But uh, I uh, hear the pizza's ready, so uh, I'm going to let Will chat a little bit for you, and uh, I'll be back in just a second, so uh, stay tuned. Well, while Sir Owen goes to take care of the pizza, I'm sorry, I was texting during the video. I have a crisis situation with a friend, but that's sort of a... That's a personal thing I won't get into, uh, nothing to really worry about. But while Sir Owen's getting the pizza, I'm just going to say we're about 45, we're about 15, 14 minutes away from Monday Night Raw, and I'm interested to see what happens tonight on the fallout. Um, I know that, you know, I'm sure John Cena will have a lot to say, I'm sure CM Punk will have a lot to say, and who knows, maybe The Undertaker might show up and I might, you know, mark out and go crazy and, you know, give Sir Owen a nice laugh and then... After I leave here, I get to go home and, you know, do homework and just, you know, relax and going to get up and go for a run, uh, go for a run tomorrow morning, you know, since I like to keep myself in better shape these days and burn off some of these calories I have been putting into my system the last couple of days. And, oh, speaking of Sir Owen, he I has, I could, but I he has returned, so I will here. give him his chair. All right. His chair um, once again. Okay. Now. I like this. I think this is awesome. Um, yes, it's great, actually. Hopefully you guys are not seeing this right now. <laughs> don't think so. I don't think so either. But, um, like I said, Mania was over overall pretty good. And um, I actually had to think about it last night. I, I was watching The Apprentice, and I was watching Pendulette kick ass like he does so well. And when it comes down to it, honestly, Mania wasn't as bad as I thought it was when I watched it originally. It basically had to take some time to uh, circle around in my mind to decide what I really thought of the show. Could have been better? Absolutely. Could it have been done any differently with the pacing and the time limits, as well as, I don't know, the match order? 100% definitely. But it wasn't, and... Obviously, like I said, you have to bring them up and then take them down back then. You got to bring them up, take them back down. You also have to sell the merch and the sodas and the alcohol, even though I'm sure most of those people were drunk when they got to the stadium yesterday. <laughs> the tailgating parties, Scarlett was telling me about those. Anyway, um, but it's legendary. It's New York. So, uh, or New Jersey, depending on how you want to look at it. It's East Rutherford. So. That's where Raw's actually going to be tonight. So You thought Raw should have been at Madison Square Garden. It would have made more sense, but apparently yeah. they couldn't get By the building. By the way... Um, Snooki making an appearance at WrestleMania. That was kind of unexpected, but also she was the social media cool. advisor. Actually, um, I thought that was Gabriel Iglesias. Actually, for she was announced as that. Gabriel Iglesias was actually supposedly the one that was mentioned before, and they actually mentioned Snooki last night during the pre-show that you barely got to watch because you were trying to uh, get everybody in. The, yes, I was the house. I was greeting guests yes. at the door. He was being a good host. Yes, and I had to, not that crappy movie, the host, the, a good host. And, yeah, and I had to, you, uh, you know, shut down my laptop and get that out of the Absolutely. way to accommodate people. Yes, so 
and I was trying to upload the video that you guys may or may not see, and you know, you might get it someday, it might come up down the road, I don't know, but uh, if not, then uh, basically I'm just going to say this, I was 6 and 9 on my predictions. I went 7 and 9. He went 7 and 9 because I uh, went with my heart instead of my gut, and it proved to be a problem because I was wrong about The Miz because I thought Barrett would retain, given the fact it was on the pre-show. I was definitely wrong about Cena and The Rock, even though I really should have went with John Cena, because at the end, I did say Cena was going to win, even though Four Down says I picked The Rock, and that was probably stupid on my part. I didn't pick Punk or anything. I'm not, I'm not dumb. So, <laughs> not trying to be PC or anything. Uh, seriously, uh, I'm not trying to be uh, like that. I'm just saying I wouldn't do that, because that's not the intelligent thing to do. We did pick CM Punk, even though I'm wearing the go-to-sleep shirt right now. But, and I'm wearing an Undertaker shirt. Yes, he is. Like, like he does. And, uh... Just like I was last night. Yes, he was. Another thing I lost on last night, you know, I really should have went with my head and picked Mark Henry, because Mark Henry should have won. But it didn't matter, like I said, because Ryback got his shine back after the match was over. So, it didn't really hurt Ryback losing to Mark Henry at all. And Mark Henry needed the win. Now, if it was up to me, I would push him and Alberto Del Rio feuding for the World Heavyweight Championship. But... Something just happened that broke on Twitter uh, over the afternoon, and I just found out about it because I just got off work. Apparently, last night, right after uh, the event, The Rock was supposed to be on Raw tonight. He flew to L.A. Yeah, and he's, uh, heard there's a report that he's injured. He's injured in some way. Some, and um, Some sort of injury. It's really interesting last night. If, if you've been in the ring before, which I don't know how many people that are going to watch this video have been in the ring before. I have been in the I've ring before. I've taken bumps in my basement. <laughs> yes, he has. I, I've been thrown into like my wall, yeah. and you know I've got a, like a little mini bar down there. Been thrown into the counter yeah. by a friend of mine who is you know in <clears throat> prison um, be because he wanted to be an independent wrestler. Yes. So I've taken bumps when I probably shouldn't have. I've been mm -hmm. you know slammed on my. Carb. I've been F five on my. You carb. let someone okay. that was basically untrained F five you. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Because he was like, "Oh, I've got this new move I want to try," and I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "You hurt me." Brock Lesnar called. He wants his everything back. I, I, and this is what I would tell <laughs> no him: I was offense. like, "You hurt me. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna whoop your ass." Yes. And what he do? That's exactly what happened. Well, he actually was no, 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 gentle no. with me. That, that, so. That's what happened. Shut up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that that happened. There, right? there were a few times. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Good job. We actually hit knuckles one time. That yeah, was kind of cool. good time. And uh, the thing about it is that I'm going to talk about is if you take in bumps in the ring and you know how the canvas feels and basically what I'm trying to say is this. Um, if you've never bumped in a ring, I personally don't believe you have a right to talk about the pain involved in professional wrestling. And uh, if you've never been I do. clotheslined or... Slammed or suplexed or been suplexed, been clotheslined. Wait, no, I've been suplexed and slammed. Mm -hmm. I haven't been clotheslined, at least not to a full extent. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I've taken bumps, mm, definitely. Now I had a way to get to this, and uh, as I was talking about that, I totally lost what I was doing. To be totally honest, so uh, do you recall what I was mentioning before I started into my diatribe here? That obviously I'm a long-winded person, as you guys should know by now. Um, actually, I do not recall. Oh boy. I believe we were talking about The Rock flying back to L.A. Ah, ha, ha. Bingo. Now, that's exactly... Thank you. Now, here's the thing. When it comes down to it, honestly... Yeah, here's the thing when it comes down to it. I'll put it on a t-shirt and say Sir and Disney on the back of it. Exactly. Drinking game. So, basically, like I said, you get in the ring, you take bumps. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You walk and talk in the ring. I'm not trying to get, break kayfabe or anything like that. I'm literally telling you what most people know anyway. Because you know, no matter how much promoters want to get rid of it. Kayfabe is kind of dead most places. Unfortunately, fortunately though, there are a lot of promoters that actually still treat it like it should be. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. During the match, uh, Cena, I'll, I'll play, I'll play Mark Smarkerson for a second, and I'll say that Cena's, the way he calls spots, it's really uh, hard to miss. And even if Obvious. You, and if you don't know, even if you don't know, What's going on? Yeah, still kind of do. He's kind of loud about it. Actually, him and Dolph Ziggler's match they had on Raw a couple weeks ago, really bad on calling spots. But I don't want to be that guy. I just want to say this. During the match, obviously I heard the go home, and it made sense. Now, after the match was over, Cena and The Rock chatted a bit in the ring. Basically, uh, during the match, Rock got frustrated and called uh, Cena um, 
um, a mother. Yeah, an MFer. Canucker. And uh, I'm not talking about Matt Hardy and Shannon Moore either. Yeah, there's a nice reference right for you. Yeah. So, this was done, of course, to put over the intensity and the emotion involved in the match. After the match was over, obviously the 80,000 plus crowd, and I say that, wink, wink, when it comes down to it, obviously you elevate the crowd because everybody does. Obviously, if you have 1,000 people, you've got like 3,000 people or 5,000 people. So it's probably elevated if I had to guess. But then the fact it's WrestleMania, eh, who knows? And then we had the Hogan Warrior passing the torch moment and the Hogan Rock moment from WrestleMania 18. Yes, absolutely. Remin reminiscent of what happened at the end of the night last night. What I was trying to say, basically, is Rock and Scene had a little chat in the ring. And obviously, most people couldn't hear it. But the mic was kind of there in the ring, and Rock basically said thank you. He said thank you right after the match lips. was over. Yeah, if you can read lips, you absolutely knew what was going on. So, Still, one of the most emotional things I've ever heard someone say was when Shawn Michaels yep. retired Ric Flair. And he I'm said, sorry, I I'm love sorry, you. I love you. And, and, he, and he took had, his hat off. He had to do what he had to do, and Flair wouldn't have wanted it any other nope, way. Because Flair, not. he would have done the same thing if the role had been reversed. Yes. He would have put Shawn Michaels in the figure four. Including the I'm sorry, I love you part. Yeah. But he probably would have wooed before he did it. Yes. And it would have been a figure four, not a super kick. Because okay. I don't think Ric Flair has ever thrown a super kick in his career. Five minutes till Raw. Yes. So, real quick, I want to I wanna say WrestleMania was really good. I enjoyed myself very much. Will enjoyed them, himself. And Absolutely. I'm sure everybody that was in attendance last night at the party did enjoy themselves. Can't wait to do it next year. And um, I'm pretty sure everybody got tired of my text message reminders, but, you know, that's just me. That's kind of funny, actually. Um, I love unlimited texting. It's very useful. So, real Gotta quick, the event over. WrestleMania was good last night. It wasn't great. It was good. I enjoyed it. Overall, it was done the way it was supposed to be done, and it was business as usual. I will be buying the DVD, even though I recorded it, and I know people are going to be like, well, why would you buy the DVD if you recorded it? Uh, because I didn't get the Hall of Fame stuff, nope. and I wanted it on the DVD. And Tuesday. I and I just don't want to watch it on television. USA. Tuesday. Uh, what is it? 10 o'clock, I believe? Yes. 10 o'clock. I believe it's 90 minutes, actually. I'm not positive on that, so check your... Local Isn't listings. There a new nostalgia critic video this week. Yes, absolutely. New nostalgia critic this is, week. Is it or is it? Was it last week? Uh, that was Cat One. So well, there should be a uh, in between nostalgia That's, critic and video. And there will be another one. Hopefully a Todd in the Shadows video and hopefully the rap critic. But so I don't want to be an actual movie review, not this week. But absolutely. Fall. Okay. So basically, what we want to say, WrestleMania was good. It was yes. enjoyable, and yes. uh, it was business as usual. Was it predictable? Yes, but it was supposed to be because that's everything was built up into it. There was no John Cena heel turn. There was no Randy Orton heel turn. There was no Dolph Ziggler cashing of Money in the Bank. No, none of that happened. This was all business as usual. And you know what? Tonight the season starts over, and the Raw after WrestleMania always starts the season, even though we don't have seasons in wrestling. Starts it over, and we start over again. Now, The Rock and Brock Lesnar, supposedly, are still with going into Extreme Rules. We're gearing roles. up for the biggest party of the summer now, folks. Absolutely. We're heading towards SummerSlam. That's not an event I was at, actually. Like I talked about Pittsburgh earlier. Nice segue. But like I said, when it comes down to it, honestly, it was a great show. Business as usual, but I'll say right now, before uh, we talk about WrestleMania 30 for a couple seconds, Ziggler cashes in tonight. I'm just going to say it right now. Ziggler cashes in, gets his moment tonight. He will cash in on Alberto Del Rio and, I and will he will win with, the World Heavyweight Championship. I will concur with my uh, colleagues Absolutely. since we have only a few minutes until Raw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zorna Blitz. Yeah. You almost cursed. It felt like it. I okay. might be wrong. I think I'm good. Good. Awesome. So like I said, WrestleMania was good. Hopefully you enjoy Raw tonight. I say Ziggler cashes in and that's probably going to happen. If it doesn't happen on tonight, it'll happen on SmackDown. I don't think he holds the case until Extreme Rules. Nope. And, you know, the John Cena heel turn, you know, honestly, it still we might happen. We saw glimpses last night. It still might happen. It Don't forget, happen. Randy Orton stayed babyface. So think about that for a second, guys. As for uh, WrestleMania 30. Big show, to, to obviously, has heat with both Orton and Sheamus. Uh, as, WrestleMania, as WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania 30 to wrap this Let's up. Let's talk about uh, this real quick. Just a couple 30, seconds. 30th anniversary, you know, mm -hmm. I... Nolan's baby. I've heard some of the matches, Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar, which I would love to see, which means, you know, 22-0 and 0 for the dead man, which... You know, Lesnar does not deserve to end the streak, in my no. opinion. Um, Triple H versus Shawn Michaels. Heard That's that right. rumor. It's a possibility. I wouldn't mind seeing that. CM Punk versus Steve Austin. This is the one that I think will happen. It's going to happen, for folks. Sure. It's going to be amazing. And in addition to the Undertaker match, JR should also call that one. Absolutely. Looking at you, Michael Cole. And then uh, Cena versus Rock 3. 
And, you know, if I could throw anything on that booking, I would add Dolph Ziggler against Daniel Bryan with some sort of a world championship on the line, Iron regardless of what it would be, and a 60-minute Iron Man match. You saw Chris Hero and CM Punk in IWA Mid-South go 64 minutes. I'll tell you right now that Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler can go the distance. And uh, hopefully we'll see Cassius Ono on Raw soon. We'll see Bray Wyatt on Raw soon. Some NXT talent getting brought up in the near future because this is a new day. A dawn of a new day for WrestleMania is now over, and now it's time for business as usual to take us into SummerSlam. Well, I I don't know about you, Sir Owen, but it's time for Raw, yes, and it is. I'm hungry. Yes, it's time for some pizza. So let's do this. So guys, I hope you like how this video looks, and I think this is how it's going to look from now on. So uh, I'll figure out how it's going to work when I'm actually looking at my television screen, reading AJ's movie reviews, or Apprentice Up recaps, whatever. But we'll figure that out soon enough. But I think this works pretty well for our two-man team, so uh, we're going to keep it this way. And uh, Sounds good to me. The first iPhone 5 video, not the last. So we're going to get off here. We're going to eat some Ultimate Pizza. If you want to see how to make it, you can uh, check out that video on this very YouTube channel in the uh, one of the playlists. So uh, you can check that out. And Will and I are going to uh, get off here. You can follow us on Twitter at WPadden for Will and at Sir Owen Disney for me. We're both on Facebook. We're on social media, so check us out if you'd like to. Basically, watch the videos, comment on the videos, thumbs up the videos, and until tomorrow, folks... Same Sir Owen time, same Sir Owen channel. That's all I gotta say about that. Bye, guys. See you guys later.